Hi, everybody. I am here with Mike McDougall. He is president of McDougall Communications in Rochester, New York. And Mike has quite a bit of experience in helping people to communicate, especially during a crisis. So Mike, can you tell me a little bit about crisis communications? What is it? And when do people use it? Sure, Gretchen. Well, uh, thanks. Crisis communications, in so many ways, is like communicating every day, except you're forced to do so in the midst of an emergency of some type. Um, usually, you're doing that under pressure. Um, you're doing it under some sort of time constraint. And usually, the situation uh, is not positive. So you take those into account because you need to communicate differently um, with your audiences. Um, and also, you need to have different expectations for yourself and your staff uh, when you're communicating at that point. So how would you suggest that doctors and medical professionals communicate with their patients now during the COVID-19 pandemic, whether they are on lockdown, whether they're seeing only emergency patients, or whether they're seeing patients for regular um, follow-up care? Oh, that's a great question. I think there's a few different tips we could look towards. One is you do need to communicate. Um, there's a tendency in the midst of a crisis to shut down and stop communicating with those people who need to hear from you. Um, I heard a story just yesterday uh, from a, a contact lens wearer um, who had concerns about wearing lenses during the pandemic. But as she told me, um, I'm afraid to contact my provider because they're open for emergency services only. I don't want to bother them. Oh. Um, so there's that sense of, Wait, oh, they'll come to me if they have a question. They may not. They respect you too much, especially if you're providing emergency-only services. Um, so it's your obligation to reach out to them. Um, make sure they're getting the information they need uh, right now. And in fact, that's going to build even more trust uh, in your practice, uh, in your team, uh, for when we're through this, uh, this pandemic um, as well. So that's, uh, that's one major tip. Um, the second is to state what you know at this time. Right, the science is changing fast. Um, the literature is shifting. Um, things will change. Keep abreast of it, but don't get too far ahead of yourself. Um, anytime you make a prediction in a crisis, uh, it's probably going to be challenged. Um, if not three weeks from now, tomorrow. Um, things are moving so fast. So what you can say is, based on what we know right now, here's my best guidance, uh, uh, my best uh, advice to you. Um, as a uh, patient. Uh, but again, try not to get too far ahead. Um, you're not Nostradamus um, and those who, uh, who, who, who try to play fortune teller uh, or regret it uh, down the road. What about, um, should this be the doctor communicating with patients? Should it be staff? Can you delegate it? Is it a mix or doesn't it really matter? Well, I think it's what your patients are more comfortable with. Um, in a time of crisis, usually they look for a uh, more senior uh, opinion uh, to give them reassurance. Um, but if your practice uh, typically communicates with your patients through staff, I wouldn't change that. In fact, that could signal that something's wrong, right? Suddenly, uh, it's elevating it uh, to the doctor, to the partner in the practice. Uh, hey, what's happening here? I think it's good to see them, um, but don't completely delegate up or down. Um, if anything, you want to provide some sense of normalcy um, as well. And, uh, and make sure your staff's still involved. They're going to be there when this pandemic uh, ends, um, we hope. And, and you want to make sure that personal trust and connection remains. What about frequency? Should uh, you stick with a regular cadence? For example, if you send out a monthly email newsletter to your patients, you should can continue to do that? Or should you send something more frequently in times like this during this pandemic to keep your patients up to speed on what's going on? It's a great question. Um, it's gonna be a bit subjective. Um, one, if you do have a current cadence, stick with it. Um, because I think that all, again will provide some degree of normalcy uh, to your patient base who's used to hearing from you. Mm -hmm. And everything is not COVID-19 related right now too. So they still will benefit um, from your counsel and advice uh, as you would normally give it. Um, two though, I would caution against uh, over communicating. Right. Um, you want to be there, but I think all of us have received emails from every single brand we've interacted with in the past 35 years who have suddenly found my email address and told me how much they valuable my, value my service or my, uh, um, uh, my business, I should say. So be cautious. 
um, but don't disappear uh, from their life suddenly and then pop back up at the same time they don't hear, need to hear from you uh, once a day. If you do want to keep a rhythm up that's more frequent than say an email communication, for those practices that have social media accounts, that's a great way to do it. That's great advice. Do you have any final tips to offer to uh, medical professionals who are seeing patients out there and really don't know how to handle crisis communications? Sure. I think one thing is just to make sure your staff understands uh, the rules of the road right now, um, your partners and the rest of your team. I know there's been a drive towards more telemedicine. Um, stick within that framework. You need to be very careful, especially when you're into communicating on social media, that you're not dispensing medical advice to the masses uh, over social. Uh, you can get yourself in a world of hurt and create other crises you weren't expecting. Um, so have very clear parameters on what you can and cannot do uh, when you're online uh, communicating. And, um, and more than anything else, um, again, reassure uh, your patients and let them know you're going to be there for them now and when they come back. That is really great advice, Mike. Thanks so much for sharing some of those tips uh, for these professionals who really don't know what to do when something like this hits. They don't wanna give out too much information. They don't wanna give out uh, not enough, as you said. So this is really helpful. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, you're very welcome. Thanks, Gretchen.